So he's angry. They broke the TV. So what happened next? Let's go. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 strangest people to appear on Judge Judy. You're ridiculous. Your case is dismissed. So you counterclaim. We're done. For this list, we'll be looking at a bizarre collection of plaintiffs and defendants who have appeared on the popular reality courtroom show Judge Judy. What's one Judge Judy case you'll never forget watching? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Petty ex-friend sues for broken toilet. Sometimes things break. So, who broke it? I'm not mad, I just want to know. It's a natural part of life and something that everyone has to deal with. In this case, however, the plaintiff, Lisa, decided she'd rather have her ex-friend Barbara deal with it. According to your complaint, she went into the bathroom and she broke your toilet. She cracked it. You yes. want her to pay for it? Yes, that's correct. After realizing Barbara broke her toilet by sitting on it, Lisa sued for damages. Unsurprisingly, Judge Judy was quick to call out the ridiculousness of the case and asked why Lisa thought the defendant should be responsible for her toilet. The toilet broke while she was using it. That doesn't mean that she broke it, and that doesn't mean that she's responsible for it. She didn't have a good answer, and Judge Judy quickly dismissed the case as being stupid, telling the woman to grow up before determining the case closed. Number 9. Woman tries to give her mom her friend's baby. Sometimes a situation has no easy solution, but the response to frustrating circumstances should never be violence, especially towards the people you're asking for help. If you tell the truth, you don't have to have a long memory. If you're going to make up stories, you're going to look very foolish and it's going to be very unpleasant. In this case, a mother sued her 20-year-old daughter for damages after she went on a bizarre rampage following her mother's refusal to take her friend's child. Your stepfather, according to you, came in and said, what are you trying to do? You want us to take this baby so that you and your friends could go out partying and having a good time? The friend was unable to support the baby, but instead of asking her mother to adopt the child legally, this woman thought it best to pawn the child off to her like a kitten. It's not like you're pawning off a kitten, you know. This is not a kitten. After hearing the story, Judge Judy was clearly perplexed by the audacity of the young woman to ask such a thing of her mother, and by extension, her stepfather. Number 8. Man accuses woman of faking death. It's easy to blame a store or salesperson when something's wrong with an item days after you've purchased it. You want to return this couch? <laughs> it's cut in half. That's what I'm telling you. Did you cut this couch in half? In this case, however, the plaintiff wasn't complaining about broken furniture, but a sickly puppy. Steve Leitner had purchased the puppy from someone in a Walgreens parking lot on a Saturday, and realized that it was sick the following Monday. The only sympathy I would have for you is if she masked somehow symptoms of a sick puppy and knowingly sold you a sick puppy. And you don't have any evidence of that. After being told it was underweight, he sued the woman he bought it from, insisting that she was at fault for selling him a sickly dog. He even went so far as to accuse the woman of faking her death and the deaths of her children, a claim for which he seemed to have very little evidence. Evidence that she tried to get out of this or contacting me by faking her own death and faking her children's death. Number 7. Car salesman sells one car to two people. Car salesmen are sometimes known for using persuasive double talk to convince you to buy a vehicle. But this salesman skipped the pitch and went right to a full-on scam. Am I getting it right? You uh, got so far... There's some eight, missing parts. You've got so far... No, the simple story, and I'm a very simple girl. Salesman Robert Martin promised two separate people a car he valued at $1,500 and collected money from them both before being taken to court by the plaintiff. As Judge Judy points out, he was effectively paid twice for the same car and a car that was only valued to be worth $825 at that. $825. So, sir, you are the only person who is now seeking $7,000 for an $800 car. 
Do you understand how stupid that sounds? Somehow, even after this revelation, the defendant still doesn't understand what he's done wrong and pushes for a $5,000 countersuit. Even more baffling? His nephew, who was promised the car alongside the plaintiff, actually agrees with him. Are you going to do that? No. Why? Because I think my uncle is in the right for what he did. Number six, defective pug purchaser. This woman is the real Karen of dog owners. Having never owned her own dog, Rachel purchased a pug from a breeder. Is this the first time you've had a dog? Since I was a child, yes. So this is the first time you've really yes. had, a, had a dog? She and her son were happy with him, and they even wanted a second dog. So far, so good. That is, until her vet told her that the dog had to be neutered, which she appeared to think meant the pug was defective. So they said I would have to have him neutered. I could not breed him. Well, they said to you it's a wise idea. Having wanted to breed the dog, she felt cheated and demanded her money back. Even stranger, she insisted she should get the money and the dog. So what you wanted was you wanted money back and the dog. Yes. She even went so far as to call the attorney general. Judge Judy scoffed at the case, pointing out that a first-time dog owner had no business breeding a dog anyway. Number 5. Potbelly Pig versus Show Dog To own a pet is to be responsible for its actions. Dog so now records. you understand that you are totally responsible for the vet bills and the other expenses. This is a lesson the defendant, Lisa, learned the hard way when her pot-bellied pig escaped her backyard and bit the prized show dog of the plaintiff, Deborah. Interestingly, though, this is a case where both plaintiff and defendant acted pretty strangely. I came out and I wanted to take a picture of the pig with the dog because the last time it was on the property, my husband says, are you sure a pig was on our property? Although most of the blame can be laid on Lisa and her unconventional pet, it's hard to overlook the fact that Deborah videoed her prized pooch sniffing at the unfamiliar animal for an extended period of time. She only reacted and pulled the Great Dane away when the dog was bitten by the pig. Hey! Hey! Seems like both could be better pet owners to their beloved animals. Number 4. Mustard Vandalizer It's not uncommon for Judge Judy cases to revolve around the damaging of personal property. And it is your claim that all three of these defendants vandalized your car. Yes, Judge. What makes this case so unusual is that the defendants decided to vandalize a man's car with mustard. Prior to the condiment crime, Billy Dye had gotten a restraining order against his cousin and allegedly quit the job they worked at together following her promotion. You were granted a protective order for two years. Yes. You were supposed to stay 300 feet away from him at all times, and you were supposed to refrain from exercising any contact with him, including through social media. Unfortunately, he still lived in the area and had to drive past his former workplace on the way to his new job. He said this is when she and two friends attacked, first with mustard and then with rocks. I have a picture showing that they squirted mustard all over my car. To make matters worse, the trio laughed throughout the entire trial and frequently interrupted both Judge Judy and the plaintiff. Hey! What part of be quiet don't you understand? Number three, Johnny Rotten. Although Judge Judy often deals with cases between everyday people, occasionally a familiar face will appear on her show. One such case was when Johnny Lydon, better known as Johnny Rotten, appeared on the show as a defendant against a drummer named Robert Williams. The charge? That Rotten laid a vicious headbutt on Williams during a heated contract dispute. It was a case made for Judge Judy. You would think that charges of assault, battery, and neglected payments would cause the singer to be on his best behavior for Judge Judy. True to his bad boy reputation, however, the Sex Pistols frontman consistently acted out in front of the famous judge, antagonizing and interrupting her as she attempted to hear both sides of the case. Hey, be respectful. Be oh, respectful sorry. in your house. Don't be disrespectful in my house. Surprisingly, she ended up ruling in his favor regardless, as the drummer lacked adequate evidence to support his claims. Fairly obvious conclusion. <laughs> Number 2. eBay Scammer On eBay, most items are used, meaning what you see is what you get, but this seller took that sentiment a little too literally. She Risk can't read. It's Risk not my fault she can't read. When someone won two cell phones by bidding on the items in Kelly Filkinson's online shop, 
She instead sent two photographs of the phones that had been shown online. And you sent her two photographs of the cell phones. And you say that that's what she paid for, two photographs of the cell phones. Are we understanding each other? Yes. You're an idiot! Even as Judge Judy insulted the woman's moral compass and called her an idiot, Kelly refused to back down. Her stance was that the listing was, and always had been, for the photographs, and that the plaintiff suing her received what they'd paid $467 for. You're a thief! Outrageous! You are out! Outrageous, madam. She even gave a bad review on the website when they complained. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pregnant Woman Busts Friend's Windshield Sometimes it's not just one person who might seem strange, but an entire case. This episode saw two former roommates at odds when one of them moved out of their shared home. Because according to her complaint, she moved in there and about a week later my friend passed away. Realizing she still had belongings there, Rosalind began blowing up her roommate Latana's phone and social media, a term Judge Judy was unfamiliar with before giving up and enlisting the help of a friend to break in. We're blowing her up on Facebook. You know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> she kept hitting up Robo, like over, a and over, over and over again. over and over and over and over and over and over and over The pair successfully broke in, but got much more than they bargained for. The then-pregnant Latana allegedly emerged from the home naked, holding a knife and a stick and screaming, I'm gonna kill you, before smashing the plaintiff's windshield. Are you freaking serious? You're gonna bust my windows out like that? All I'm trying to do is get my stuff. So she's like, you're gonna get out of here. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna cut you from ear to ear. Certainly a peculiar way to come at a burglar, but Judge Judy ruled in her favor anyway, deciding the break-in justified the unconventional defense. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.